In this video, we'll start to make predictions about the spread of a disease by developing the idea of rate equations, which are sometimes called differential equations. In the last video, we developed the idea of splitting the population into three groups, where S represented the number of susceptible people, I represented the number of infected people, and R represented the number of removed people. Now, let's look at a concrete example. Let's suppose that the one-legged R disease has been spreading for 30 days in a population, and it has been spreading at a rate of 470 new cases per day for the last several days. Let's say that there are currently 100,000 people who are susceptible, 10,000 people who are infected, and 3,000 people who have recovered. If this rate stays constant for the next four days, how many susceptible people would there be? I'd like you to pause the video and think about how you would figure this out. Now, this scenario doesn't say anything about how many people move from the infected to the removed groups, so we're not going to take those numbers into account right now. This rate of 470 new cases per day means that, after one day, 470 people will move from the susceptible group to the infected group. So the number of infected people on day 31 will be 470 more than on day 30 and the size of the susceptible group has to decrease by 470 people to get 99,530 susceptible people. And we could repeat this process of adding 470 to the number of infected people and subtracting 470 from the number of susceptible people and would eventually find that there would be 98,120 susceptible people and 11,880 infected people on day 34. Now, we didn't take into account the number of removed people, but that would only affect the number of infected people, and not the number of susceptible people. And what if we wanted to express S of t as a formula? Pause the video for a moment and think about how you might do that. We started thinking about S when there were 100,000 susceptible people and then the number of susceptible people decreased by 470 for each one-day increase. And since we're starting at day 30, we need to adjust this from t to t minus 30. Now, this scenario wasn't particularly realistic, because as the number of infected people grows, we'd expect the disease to spread more rapidly. So let's think about a slightly different scenario. What if half of the infected people each infect one susceptible person each day. How many susceptible people would there be on day 34? Pause the video and think about how you would figure this out. So on day 30, there are 10,000 infected people. If half of them infect a susceptible person, then the number of infected people will increase by 5,000, and the number of susceptible people will decrease by 5,000. On the next day, there are 15,000 infected people, so half, or 7,500, will infect a susceptible person. And if we continue doing this, we'll end up with 50,625 infected people and 59,375 susceptible people. And I'd like you to pause the video again and think about how you might write a formula for the number of susceptible people. It would probably start off the same, since we're starting with 100,000 susceptible people on day 30. And since 5,000 susceptible people got infected the next day, it's tempting to try something similar to the previous scenario, using 5,000 times t minus 30. However, that formula would indicate that 5,000 people would get infected each day, but there were 7,500 new infections on the second day, and that number of new infections each day kept increasing. So writing a formula for this scenario would be pretty challenging. So we need a slightly different way to think about what's going on. Both of the scenarios we looked at involved rates. In the first scenario, there were 470 new infections each day. So the number of infected and susceptible people was changing at a constant rate. In the second scenario, there were I of t divided by two new infections each day because half of the infected people infected a susceptible person. And this rate was changing. 
Instead of trying to write a formula for the number of susceptible or infected people, we can use a rate equation, also called a differential equation, which is a mathematical formula that describes the rate at which a quantity changes. In general, we can write S prime of t for the rate at which the number of susceptible people is changing, and I prime of t is the rate at which the number of infected people is changing and r prime of t is the rate at which the number of removed people is changing. And each of these rates is measured with units of people per day. So in scenario one, since i of t is increasing at a rate of 470 people each day, we could write i prime of t is equal to 470 people per day. And since s of t is decreasing at a rate of 470 people each day, we could write s prime of t is equal to negative 470 people per day. And in scenario two, since the rate at which infections occur depends on the number of infected people there are, we would have i prime of t is equal to i divided by two people per day. And s prime of t is equal to negative i divided by two people per day. In this case, the rate equations are called differential equations, because they relate the function i of t with its rate i prime of t. So these rate equations let us describe how the numbers of infected and susceptible people are changing, and they're particularly useful when these rates aren't constant. And we'll use these rate equations to create a more complete model of how the disease is spreading in the population.